All right. It says we are live. We'll see how long it takes. So how is everything? <laughs> we are on Bushnell. Are we? Yep, we are live on Bushnell here with Realtree. Waiting for our first viewer. There might be somebody on yet, but I don't I don't see the there we go. Now we're up to two. Moving right up. Me, come on. <laughs> right, huh? It's kind of like watching the stock price. He's going to keep getting higher and higher. <laughs> All right. Jumped up to 14. I like it. That sounds good. That's well, welcome, awesome. everybody. This is the uh, 10th edition of our Bushnell Live series. We've got a really uh, awesome guest with us today, Mr. David Blanton from the Realtree team. How are you doing, David? Hey, Matt, when you said awesome, did you say it like awesome, like I say it? <laughs> I did. I did. I did my best. I don't quite have that southern draw. My oaky draw comes out a little bit, but you Georgia boys, I could listen to you guys around a campfire all day. <laughs> you know how I spell awesome? How do you spell it? A-W-L-S-U-M. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Is there a story behind that or just uh, how, you, how you like to spell it? I, I got that copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Well, if you're tuning in and you don't know David, well, then uh, I guess you don't know much about the outdoor television or Realtree. So, I mean, David's been doing this for quite a long time. I mean, you are the, the host of Realtree Road Trips, Realtree Outdoors, and then uh, Buckmasters on the Sportsman's Channel, right? I get all that right. And I'm sure several things in between. Well, we got Marsha Bucks TV on Sportsman's Channel. Uh, Real Tree Outdoors on Outdoor Channel, and then of course the Monster Bucks uh, DVDs. I, I oversee Real Tree Road Trips, which is hosted by Michael Waddell and and then Travis and, and Nick you know, uh, to some degree, and Tyler, of course. But uh, mainly Tyler and Bill Jordan, they host Real Tree Outdoors also. Uh, so very nice. Yeah, yeah that's a lot going on. Yeah, you do. You guys are everywhere. I mean, not only the shows on Outdoor Channel and Sportsman Channel, but you've got a, a whole, or whatever you want to call them, a bunch, a covey of of opportunities to watch there on the on the 365. Yes. Yeah, you know, Matt, that's, that's very interesting you brought that up because, as we all know, our world is constantly changing as for how people get their content. And uh, that digital format – uh, on on the web is is becoming more and more popular, and a lot of people are going there to get their hunting content. Even so, we're really uh, fired up about Real Tree 365, and and as you mentioned, the, the the cluster of shows over there, including Midwest Whitetails, uh, Spring Thunder Turkey with Philip Culpepper, uh, a slew of shows people can go just download the app Real Tree 365. Yeah, it's, that's awesome. You guys have been kind of on the cutting edge of that stuff. I mean, I know a lot of shows are moving that way, but not only did you move there quickly, but you moved there in force. So there's a, a lot of great shows that you said, just download the app and you can yep. find out whatever yep. it is you enjoy hunting and you guys have got a show on it. Well, you got to give folks a destination that when, when they go there, they can be entertained for quite a while and, and they can find anything and everything they're looking for regardless of what kind of hunting they're most interested in. And that's been our desire from day one with Real Tree 365. Very cool. Well, this is a, this is a big week for both Bushnell and Real Tree. We got a lot of things going on just between us. Uh, announcement of the official right. optics of Real Tree from Bushnell. You guys, are you guys excited as we are? This is, this is big stuff. Incredible. You know, uh, I've admired the Bushnell products. Well, for a long, long time. And, uh, have just sat back and watched how much fun Michael and the bone collector guys have had with Bushnell for years. And for, 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 for us to now be considered, uh, for Bushnell to now be considered the official optic of Realtree is fantastic. And that includes everybody in our family. And, and I, I had so much success this past year using the Bushnell products, whether it was range finders or scopes or binoculars and, and I, I can't wait till the ones coming out this coming year. Yeah, no, we got some big stuff on the horizon, and we'll we'll get a little bit into that a little later on. But yeah. uh, no, we're excited as well. This is a this is a great. I mean, you talk about two iconic brands that share a passion for hunting and outdoors, and to be able to kind of unite those two together in a in a bigger way than what we have been working with each other, it's it's great. Um, and to remind people, uh, if you want to get on. Bushnell and Realtree, we're doing a sweepstake. So uh, go right. on over to, to the Realtree 
website. Uh, we've got some prize packages. Um, over $2,000. We're giving away a grand prize and then a secondary prize. So if you, no purchase necessary, don't have to buy anything, just sign up. And man, that's a good looking prize bag, David. Did you get your name in the hat for that? Well, I have, I have uh, put my name in probably, I think, 1,500 times, but they told me that I'm not eligible to win. So I had, I had the same thing myself, but I, I'll get my wife to put her name in there a couple more times and I hope the odds get a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> well, David, I, I know with a you know a background like yours, there's a lot of different subjects that we could go off on. Um, you've got a wealth of knowledge, and you know one of the best at what you do. But what I wanted to talk a little bit was kind of how you got started in hunting in general, and then maybe a little quick little overview um, of kind of teaming up with Realtree. And um, when I was kind of doing some reading on you, reading some past interviews, and and doing my research, as I like to say. Um, I, it was mentioned that, you know, you grew up in South Carolina. Was that correct? I was born in South Carolina. And uh, believe it or not, when I go and speak, I, 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 people are surprised when I tell them that I did not grow up hunting like a lot of people. I grew up in a sports family and it was baseball, basketball, football for us. Uh, my dad was in the textile business in upstate South Carolina. But he got transferred when I was 14. He got transferred to extreme southeast Georgia. And that's where hunting is a way of life. I mean, everybody hunted. And that's where we, my older brother and my dad and I got introduced into hunting. And, and man, I'll tell you, it was amazing that to go from this kid that knew nothing about hunting to just getting completely enamored by hunting. And, and all we did was bow hunt. Uh, my, my dad, my brother and I, we, we, people took us under their wings and began to kind of let us go hunting with them some. And so I learned how to hunt with my dad and my brother all at the same time, which is kind of cool, really. Cool. Uh, yeah. And, and, and so we didn't know what we were doing, but, uh, we had a blast and that. So when I was 14, that's when I got my first bow and it was a, it was a Rico Fred Bear. 76 recurve okay. red white and blue fiberglass takedown recurve bow. nice because compounds weren't even legal back then and in, uh, in georgia and of course we just moved up and, and we kept bow hunting for for years and i just completely bit i couldn't get my hands on enough stuff to read but a lot of people may not know this man but back then the only the only place you could go and learn about hunting or deer hunting specifically was to read either outdoor life Field and stream or sports to field. And that was it. You're right. There were no TV shows or videos. Right. That was it. And I just, I couldn't get enough of it. So that's where I, I learned how to hunt. I was, uh, I was reading a great story and hopefully it's true. There's not, you know, lies out there on the internet. We know there are, but one of them was talking about one of your first hunts when you were 14 and you and your dad going out to set up a couple stands and you noticed the deer track in the road. And that's where you guys decided to, to hang your stand. You said you didn't have, didn't have any luck, but that's a cool story to kind of have that as. We didn't know anything else to do. Uh, uh, there was a deer track. I, I knew that from the diagrams and outdoor life in the mud. And so we had those homemade climbing stands and we just, both of us just climbed up two pine trees right there within 20 yards of each other. And of course we didn't see any deer, but that, that was, that was how we started hunting. That's awesome. So uh, did you have any early ambitions as a kid? Was there anything that you thought you wanted to go into as kind of a professional career? Or did Was hunting pretty evident to you early on? Well, you know, growing up until I was 14 or even through high school, I, I was I, I was a basketball player and I was, I was a pretty good basketball player. So I, I wanted to play college basketball, which I did for two years. And but it didn't take me long to realize when I got to college that, that I wasn't going to make a living playing basketball. Uh but it was, you know, it was I, it, the hand of God intervened and, and had me had a path for me. And I was a, I had transferred to the University of Georgia and I was about to go into my junior year in Athens, Georgia, to university. And I got a call from a, my, a friend of my brother's that there was a job opening at this plantation, this honey plantation uh, for for someone to come and work that fall. So I went and interviewed and got the job. And, and so I started working on the hunting plantation, uh, just running errands and cutting grass and uh, plowing food plots and cutting firewood and cleaning dog kennels. 
And I did that for three months during the fall and loved it. Absolutely loved it. So that was my first job in the hunting industry was being a gopher at a hunting plantation. <laughs> Well, that's a good way to get inducted into it. I mean, you you probably learned a lot, saw a lot of things that, yes. that people don't get a lot of different experiences. But, you know, shortly after that, you opened up a sporting goods store in, in LaGrange, right? That was I did. Of, and this is that, where that. I did. So so I worked at the hunting plantation, graduated from Georgia, was the manager on the hunting plantation for a couple of years, got married. And that's when we moved to LaGrange, Georgia, where I still live to this day. And uh I just had to do something in the hunting industry uh, to, to try to make a living. And a friend of mine and I, we opened up a sporting goods store. I was the hunting end of the business. He was the fishing end. And we called it LaGrange Outdoors. And, and it was a little, just a little retail store. We, we concentrated on archery. We, we, we sold guns and a lot of fishing and stuff. And, and it was an awesome little store, but it wasn't big enough to really make a career out of, but gotcha. it was awesome at the time. Well, this is about the same time we opened in 1987, which was one year after Bill Jordan had just come out with Realtree in 86. And with Columbus, Georgia, the home of Realtree, where I'm sitting now, only 40 miles from LaGrange, naturally I became a dealer for Realtree, selling it in my clothes. And this is this mm -hmm. new camo that just out on the market and I became one of Bill's first independent retailers, and, uh, yeah. and it was it was something to see this brand new camouflage come out on the market, and and I met Bill shortly thereafter. It's a funny story; a lot of people don't realize this. I, I I met Bill one summer evening about an hour before dark on the edge of a kudzu field in Harris County, glass and big velvet whitetails coming in to eat kudzu right before dark and it was bill's hunting lease and one of his friends was a member with him and that's where i met bill on the edge of that kudzu field and uh and that's where our friendship began was overlooking a kudzu field okay. and one thing led to another and and uh, bill and i just hit it off and started hunting together a little bit and and then uh, we were dabbling in in the outdoor television a little bit on right. the local market in LaGrange and mm -hmm. Bill being the entrepreneur that he is, he realized that, that it, if Realtree was going to make it, and he told me this in his exact words, he said, David, if Realtree is going to make it, we need a national hunting show because TNN, the national network had started airing Buckmasters, um, fishing shows, Right, right. And and uh, and he said, I've seen what y'all are trying to do up here with a little local show. Why don't you come to work for Realtree and let's just see if we can make a go of it. And, and so I went to work for Bill, but he gave me fair warning. He said, David, I, I don't pretend to know that what we're going to try to do is going to work. I have no idea. It may it may flop. He said, but let's give it a shot. So I, I went to work for Bill in, in 1990. And we started filming and, and that was the beginning of, of, of our relationship. That was the beginning ultimately of monster buck VHS videos. And then in 93, we finally got on TNN uh, and started real true outdoors. That's a, that's a great story. So if you're uh, you're just tuning in, uh, we're here on Bushnell live talking with David Blanton, kind of getting some inside scoop on how the whole real tree uh, phenomenon that it is today, as far as the production company and everything they're doing started. David's talking a little bit about that, but I, I had a question um, right before that. You mentioned it briefly, but you were kind of doing you know, your local outdoor report on the local cable access. Somehow in my mind, I had this kind of Wayne's World feeling of you sitting there kind of off the cuff, just giving the local fishing report and what's by that is, that. Was that what it was? That is exactly what it started out as. What are the fish biting? What are the deer doing? And then, so we had this, we had this VHS handy cam camera that we could go and film each other rabbit hunt, or I could go film my partner catch crappy on West Point Lake. I actually had a guy go with me sit in the stand. I actually shot a, a buck with a bow on video, my first ever on video. And we would just kind of put that on this little 
it wasn't a TV station. It was like you mentioned, it was that local cable access channel. And that's how it started. And, and, and we eventually the next year syndicated down to Columbus, Georgia. And we changed the name to Outdoors in Dixie. And we aired on Sunday mornings at 830 on the local NBC affiliate. And that's where Bill Jordan first saw our show. And then that that set his mind in motion. We, we can do this. And then when I got to know Bill. He he mentioned, let's try this on a national scale. Yeah, that, that's a that's a great story how that all kind of worked together. And I mean, one of the things that you worked hard to do, and, I, and I'm sure, as you said, he, he didn't know if it was going to succeed or not. But I was also reading you were very adamant about wanting to have that that impact shot as part of the filming and nobody oh, was yeah. doing that. And that was something you thought that the hunters and viewers would really gravitate towards. Well, right? see Matt, when, when, when the national network was up and running, it was the only place to really watch hunting and fishing shows nationally, you know, Roland Martin, Bill Dance, Jimmy Houston, Jackie Bushman. And Bill Jordan knew that if he could get a show on there, it would, it would put the real tree name up in lights. And uh, it took us, three years to get permission to go on there because frankly our equipment we had wasn't broadcast quality. We, we couldn't afford that kind of equipment at first. And finally Bill bit the bullet, bought really expensive cameras back then. Beta SP format was what you had to have. Those cameras were a minimum of $40,000. And uh, nowadays you can buy a $3,000 camera that shoots video high quality enough right to go on TV. You can put it on television. So um, when we finally got the green light from TNN to, to start Real Trout Doors on air, I went to Bill because I by now I'm a fan of, of, of all the shows on television, the few there were. And nobody was showing impact. They were on the videos that they could buy at retail, but nobody would show it on television. And I told Bill, I said, Bill, let's, I think we need to show impact because I think that's what our customer wants to see they want to see how a hunt really evolves and he said do you think we can get away with that and i said yeah i do so we did right out of the gate well you can imagine the ratings just went wow i mean because for the first time hunters could watch the arrow hit the deer the bullet hit the deer and of course you got to edit it tastefully but yeah, sure. knew that it wasn't it was real it, right. it really happens. Yeah. I, I think that you hit on a big part of that, how it really happens because yeah. without that, you don't know is did that really, was that sequence the same? Was that right. the same deer? Was that what, what changed between, between yeah. the time they're walking up to do the reveal? That's you know? right. And so that, that really set um, real tree outdoors on a path that we were the highest rated hunting show in the history of television that year. Uh, we were the highest rated show on television that year. Some of the numbers that we pulled way back in the day, because see, it was Sunday night. Well, what, what would be awesome is in the summertime when we started airing, NASCAR races were airing live on TNN. Eli Gold was the, which was the track announcer. If they had a rain delay, it was perfect because everything would get shifted around. And I remember a couple of races where they were in like the final laps of the NASCAR race and Eli Gold would come on. Hey, folks, stay tuned. Uh, uh, we've had some program changes coming up right after we go to the checkered flag and uh, stay tuned for Real Tree Outdoors right here on TNN. Wow. You, you, we, we were pulling down numbers back then from a Nielsen ratings that you I, wouldn't even think about pulling down nowadays. I bet. I was going to say, you you can't get that type of pull uh -uh. now with uh -uh. all the ad dollars in the world. That's awesome. That's right. That was really good. So, you know, through your career, David, I mean, we were talking about a little bit earlier, but you've had the chance to to see, uh, uh, I don't know, an army of new <laughs> hunters and people take to the screen, the the Michael Waddells, the, yeah. the wow. Travises, the, the Drewries, the, I mean, yeah. everybody. I mean, that's got to feel pretty – I mean, how's that feel? I guess is the question to watch all those guys and gals kind of ascend up the ranks. Well, it's it's amazing. It, it it it's truly a blessing to know that what you did impacted so many people or inspired so many people to do what they wanted to do. Whether it's Lee and Tiffany Lukoski, 
uh, Michael Waddell. I mean, Michael's a local boy here, grew up 20 miles from here in Booger Bottom, Georgia, which is a real place, by the way. <laughs> uh, you know, we hired Michael as a 18 year old uh, to help us guide turkey hunters here. Had no idea. We just knew Michael could run a turkey call and was a good hunter. Right. We had no idea the charisma he had, his personality. We hired Michael. And the next thing we know, we hired him full time. He becomes a cameraman, then an editor. And then the next thing you know, he's hunting in front of the camera. And then the next thing you know, several years down the road, he's got bone collected. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's awesome, actually. Um, I remember uh, years ago being at a consumer show in Virginia. I had this guy and this girl, a young guy and girl, walk up to me to introduce themselves and say, man, we really love watching your shows. And one day I just really hope I would love to do that for a living. I just really wish I had the opportunity. Well, that was Kip Campbell of Red wow. Iron Television. <laughs> and, and of course, Kip does a great job now, but, uh, sure. but it's been amazing to watch Bill Jordan platform of Realtree take these folks and, and, and put them up in lights, Don and Candy Kiske. I mean, you, the list goes on and on and on. It does. It does. And we've, we've had the great opportunity to have several of those names come on before you yeah. did and join us on this and yes. you know, go back and watch some of those episodes on YouTube and on our Facebook page. But they all had a very, you know, um, profound respect for Realtree and what Bill Jordan started and what you guys had helped them do. And it was interesting hearing how all those webs just kind of intersected and, uh, take you down memory lane a little bit. Um, I, I did find a good picture I wanted to show everybody. You speak of that 18 year old boy, uh, Michael. Uh, this this is a good image, I think. Does that bring back Where's some memories? Wow. <laughs> and look, I had hair back then. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. You and talk about it. Yeah, that would have been way back in the day. No kidding. That's, That's awesome. Fun. Yeah, I, I found a couple other ones that might, might jog a memory. These are more to your past, but uh, Here's, wow. here's a good one, I think. Wow. That looked like that was a fun hunt. A little cold that back there. River. That's, that, no, actually, you know what? No, that's that's South Dakota. Yeah, during the blizzard. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, another good one, I thought, kind of uh, going back in the day a little bit. Never forget that hunt. You know, people, people say, how do you remember all these hunts? That's Alberta. That was the last afternoon of the last day. Uh, you, and you never forget hunts. You always remember the little details and hunts, which is amazing to me. I can't remember where my house is sometimes. And, and you, you don't you don't forget hunts. You got uh, Chad Bailey just commented. You know, he said he grew up watching the Realtree Monster Bucks on VHS and drove his passion for bow hunting and working in the outdoor industry. So even the people that aren't, you know, filming and out in front of a camera, you, you guys have certainly inspired a lot of people to get involved however they could so it's yeah uh, yeah thank you chad that's mine and i should be to say that yes uh monster buck the monster buck videos and dvds are are by far the best selling deer hunting uh dvds or videos of all time and there's so many people say that they have the entire collection in their hunting camp and they and they watch them every year before hunting season comes in and even the old vhs copies it's it's incredible yeah, we were uh, when Will and Jimmy were on last week. We we showed some of those covers, and I mean, it, like you said, it's almost like a a cult. People have these; they show them up on eBay, and they drive a pretty hefty price. And I'm just wondering who still has a a VHS machine to watch them in. But uh, right. they, they're, they're worth they're pieces of history, and it's it's uh, really neat. So, uh, you know, David, I'd be remiss if I didn't you know ask you a couple of questions about probably what might be arguably one of your most famous episodes, and. That was something that aired back in September 2015 with the uh, Houdini buck. Yes. And, uh, yeah. For the people who uh, who might not, you know, have had a chance to see that, um, you uh, during the process of that hunt, going after a buck that had been pretty elusive for you, uh, you know, you kind of gave what I would call a kind of a faith testimonial up in the tree stand. That yes, I mean, moved a lot of people. I mean, including myself watching that, right. and uh, that that was very powerful stuff. And I'm, I'm catching the. Is, I'm sure a lot of people still come up and ask you about that today in shows and talk yeah. about it. Well, you know, I tell you what, Matt, that that was a that entire episode or hunt was was a, a God thing designed by God. But I, I I got more response off of that show than any show I've ever been a part of. 
people were writing handwritten or handwriting letters to, in here to talk about that show had no idea that it would it would elicit that kind of response from people but but if people didn't see that episode it was simply turned out to be uh, 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 I got exposed as allowing hunting or deer to become too much of a priority o over life itself. And uh, I got hooked on this big deer in Kansas and, and hunted him for a few days and he disappeared, went home. I was convicted. It was, it had become way much, too much of a priority. Go back out a couple of weeks later when he showed back up on trail cam on the second day of the hunt, we ended up shooting this deer, my biggest whitetail to date. And I was overcome with emotion if people saw the show and they think it was because I just killed a giant of a whitetail, but in reality it wasn't. It was because I overcame with emotion because at that moment I realized that I had, I had failed and, and allowed deer to become too important, hunting to become too important, my job become too important. But when God blessed me with that deer and it was a blessing from God, no, no question about that. I just realized God's goodness and his grace and his mercy on me who had, who had put deer in front of my walk with him. And I was just overcome by that, by his goodness. And, and, and Daniel Thomas, our producer here asked me when we were editing that show, he said, how do you want this to lay out? How do you want this show to go? And I said, Daniel, I want this show to be exactly the way it really happened. I don't want to hide anything. I don't want to cut out me crying in the tree stand. I don't want to cut out my struggles with my job becoming too important, deer becoming too important. I, I just want to show it the way it really happened. And, uh, and the response was overwhelming, absolutely overwhelming, incredible response. So I just think it shows that people, they, they love it when, when they can relate to you on camera and know that you're, you're just like them and you have your own faults. You have your own weaknesses. You make your own mistakes. Look, we all walk with a limp in this life. And when people, when you're not afraid to expose that, I think people appreciate that. Yeah. I, I 100% agree. Uh, too often times, and you know, especially in today's society, we all feel like we've got to walk around with that protective shield because of what might be inbound or outbound. And it, it, it's hard to be you and it's hard yeah. to, you know, yeah. so for you to kind of do that in such a, a large national That's audience right. and That's have right. that effect on people is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate you talking to us a little bit about that. Oh, I, had, yeah. I had to ask as a fan, I had to ask because it definitely was a was a movie moment as a viewer to watch that episode. And I, oh, yeah. People can still find that on the Realtree Network. I, I, I know yeah, you can, I can, you can, online. you can find it if you get, everybody wants to, to look for that Houdini episode uh, yeah. back in 15. So. I, I mean, David, you've you've hunted a lot of things, and while while we're kind of reminiscing here, I wanted to show a few more pictures of some of the other animals you've thought to pursue. But is there one that is one of the most memorable? I mean, uh, I've I've always wanted a sheep hunt. I'm sure that that one was a good one. So Man, I mean, that 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 was an old sheep hunt. I went to Northwest Territories. I was invited by Jeff Foxworthy to go along with him to hunt. So the two of us went up there, and that was the episode with we. It was so hot up there; it was 95 degrees. 50 miles from the Arctic Circle, record-breaking heat, and we are just filthy, nasty. We've been sweating for 10 days. We finally couldn't stand it any longer, and we stripped down to our our skivvies, our whitey tighties, and we jumped in a mountain stream to, to wash off, and the water was so cold, and we videoed it all and put it on TV. People still talk about that episode from years ago. Me and Jeff Foster were out there in our whitey tighties uh, trying to get clean, that was an amazing hunt. But I have to say, I get asked that question a lot. What are your most memorable hunts? And for me, I go back to my three boys who are grown now. Them taking their first deer. You know, Harmon was nine, Alex was nine, and Lucas was 10 when they all took their first deer. And I was right there with them, and I videoed them all taking their first buck. The, those are... You can't really do better than that when it comes to more memorable hunts. I bet. I bet. Yeah. As a, as a recent father, our, our daughter, uh, wife and I were lucky enough to ask to have a baby girl last year. She's going to turn one here in a couple of days. So we're excited, but I, I can't wait uh, to oh, get yeah. her out there. And uh, she, she has no, 
hope but to love the outdoors with two parents like us. So it'll be a lot of fun. Looking looking forward to making those same memories. But yes, you know, absolutely. <laughs> Out of all the people you've hunted with, has there been a, a most, you know, enjoyable one? I mean, I know that list goes just as deep, but you I mean from Dell Earnhardt to uh, yeah. all the people we've mentioned, I mean, is there anybody that maybe you hunted with that you were just, uh, you know, maybe after looking back, you're like, hey, I didn't, maybe I had a different opinion about him. And then we went hunting and that changed, or maybe somebody you were kind of awestruck to actually share a camp with. Well, obviously, Dale Earnhardt Sr., he, he, the memories that I created with him are incredible, especially given the fact that his life was shortened by the tragedy at Daytona. And you just think about all the times you had with him in the woods laughing and cutting. And, and uh, but, but honestly, as I sit here, yes, I could throw out big names, but really uh, the ones that really had the biggest impact on me were a kid by the name of Chip Madron. Uh, that had uh, a cancerous brain tumor removed from his brain stem, which left him with a lot of obstacles. And to this day, he still can't walk very well. Uh, he was on, he came out of surgery. I met him through the outdoor channel just to encourage him. He had just come out of surgery a month earlier. He was on his, they didn't know if he was going to survive. He, you didn't know if he could understand you and you talked to him, but he was, his family was a family of hunters. And I, I promised him then, I said, Chip, when you get better, we're going to take you to the Milk River. And, of course, he, his eyes got about this big. He couldn't talk, but his eyes got about this big because he'd seen all the monster bucks from the Milk River in Montana. And his mom and dad are just boo-hooing. I start crying. They're like, hey, he knows exactly what you're saying. I said, Chip, you get better. We're taking you to the Milk River. Well, five years later, he finally got well enough, strong enough to go. We took him to the Milk River and and video the entire trip and he ended up killing a really nice buck even with limited eyesight and mobility and that to this day is is has to be one of the most memorable people i've ever hunted with was chip madra because of what he he does and how he encourages people his attitude is incredible and to this day he's still uh cancer free uh, amazing amazing inspiration great that's awesome. That's a that's a great story. That's a good that's a good memorable one to have. If we yeah. could all, all all be so lucky to do that. So yes. hey, if if you're just tuning in here, uh, Bushnell Live. Um, if you want to comment in the sections of where you're listening from, we've got some really nice lids. So uh, we're going to give away some of these hats. Uh, this one's mine. You're not going to get to keep this one because I I like this one too much. But uh, just pop off in the comment section where you're listening from. We we've had a bunch of viewers, people checking in from as far as Ireland and. Uh, it's great to, to know everybody out there listening. So uh, just add where you're where you're from or where you're listening from in the comments, and uh, we got some hats we're gonna give out. So uh, so you know, uh, David, I don't want to take up all your all your whole day. I mean, like I said, there's a, a lot of questions I, I had, but uh, we'll save them for uh, for round two when you come on. But you know, one of the things I, I wanted to ask you about a little bit was. Uh, you know, it is kind of the off season now for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, you know, what are some tips or maybe some suggestions you might have uh, for people kind of getting ready to gear up? You know, whether it's you know that kind of that stay in shape, to stay healthy, or things they can do at home. You know, what what are some things that uh, you know you feel are, are good to do during the, this off season or before? Because September will be here quick. <laughs> yes, it will. And and you know, with with me uh, getting up in age now a little bit, it's harder and harder to stay in the shape. And and it's important for me to go into September in in pretty good physical shape because the fall is a grind, but also because of an elk hunt. If you have an elk hunt scheduled, you don't want the camera crew to be waiting on you at the top of the hill. And uh, that would so so I really try to exercise and work out and be in shape for elk season. But it also just helps you get through that fall from getting worn down, because once you get into uh, November, December and, and and you're sitting in a tree a lot and you're not like out there hoofing it, and hiking and walking, that, that that's when you get out of shape. But as people prepare for deer season, it, it's so See, I just love this time of year now because people are so busy sitting out their trail cams and, and plowing their food plots and 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 
preparing or improving their whitetail habitat, getting ready for the, to the fall. And I love keeping up with it on social media because you can watch everybody uh, gear up for the season. And, um, and as it gets closer, people get real excited about going out there and, and glassing and, 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 or with a spotting scope or binoculars to find those bucks in velvet that they're going to probably be on their hit list this fall. The one piece of advice I give people is, yes, it's exciting. You want us to take an inventory, see what kind of deer you got. But don't crowd them. Don't get too close. Keep your distance. Never even consider going in there without a, a great wind because you don't want those deer to get educated or, or even worse, get spooked and leave the property. Right. Keep your distance. Be smart. Only go in there occasionally. Uh, you don't have to go in there and look at a buck every evening. You know, what is in there, just let let him be comfortable, relaxed. That's a that's a good tip. Yeah, that's that's that that, that overpressure, you know, in, yeah. inadvertently or yeah. purposefully yeah. in a way can definitely uh right. make it bad. So uh man, we've had a bunch of people checking in, Conroe, Texas, Macon County, Georgia, down there in your neck of the woods, central oh, Michigan, right, right. Melbourne, Florida. So I think we're we're getting all the states covered. So again, if you're just tuning in or have been listening, go ahead and uh Tell us where you're from or where you're watching us at down there in the comments. And we're going to give out some of these nice Bushnell Realtree hats. Happy to do it. Two great brands and uh, happy to be working with you guys. So, um, you know, here in a minute, David, we're going to have uh, one of our uh, senior product managers yeah. going to come on and talk a little bit about some of the new stuff that's coming out with Realtree. Because I know there's a lot of interest in, you know, what's coming down the pipe. But uh, what's been one of your favorite optics that you've used in the last couple of years? I mean, I know you had a Heck of a muzzleloader hunt uh, on an elk with that forge rifle scope. So I was curious, what well, were your favorite ones? Well, the forge rifle scope on the on the on the muzzleloader hunt was incredible because that was that was a that was a CBA Paramount Pro long range muzzleloader. I, I, it took me 16 years to draw that um, Utah elk tag. So you're geared up to to shoot uh, three or four hundred yards, right? So so I've got the forge with the with the uh, turrets and i mean it's long range like it's dialed in i feel comfortable that i could have shot an elk at 500 yards with that gun with that forward scope on there easy and wouldn't you know it i shot the bullet like 35 yards it was it was, uh, it was so intense the bull walks out at 60 yards but he turns and starts walking right to us and we're filming the whole thing and i'm just dialing back the object because he's getting closer and all i'm seeing is hair and i keep dialing it back <laughs> and uh, shot the bull finally at, at broadside at 35 yards. But I love that scope. I love the prime scopes as well. Just for uh, I, I shot a whitetail this year in Texas with the prime uh, rifle scope. It was awesome. But but uh, the in the Forge family, my, my favorite binos were the 10 by 42s. Yeah, and they just look good too. They do. They do. And, uh, and I don't want to steal Jared's thunder, but we, we got something we, we might show off here just a little oh. bit. He's probably, he's probably going to be mad. I stole him off his desk when I was in the office the other day. Uh, they're loud. So uh, without further ado, let's see if we can get the man to come on in. This is uh, Jared. How you doing, man? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Hey, Jared. Hey, David. How are you? Hey, By the way, congratulations on your 30th anniversary with Realtree. Yes. How do you get your toes and fingers and everything to count up 30 years, but congrats. You didn't have 30, did you? No. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't let him lie to you. He, 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 he don't want to ask that question too many times. So, you know, we, we thought it might be fun because we always get a lot of comments, people wanting to know, hey, what are you guys coming out with next? What what, what else is coming out? So we, we thought Jared would be a great guy, and he's an avid hunter himself to show a couple of these new optics yeah. we got coming out with some of the – so the real tree. So, uh, uh, Jared, you ready to maybe give a little insight on a couple of these? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, this time last year we introduced our Bushnell's new range finders and, and leveraging that platform, we we're coming out with a new real tree bone collector, uh, leveraging, you know, Michael Waddell and, and Bill Jordan and, and all of the team. So we've, we've got this new, um, bone collector 850 coming out. Uh, you'll be able to purchase it at places like Walmart or even on Amazon. Street price on this is $139.99. Uh, you can see in the picture there, it's a 2i system. So it's it's really robust and a higher end uh, range finder. It's got scan, our angle range compensation. Uh, it's 
an exo barrier on the on the lenses so if you're in rough elements it'll whisk off that rain and snow and and sleet and debris so really excited about this and and the the difference on this rangefinder now is is it's two times the light transmission of most rangefinders in the market at this price wow. it is really bright in low light conditions so i've got it here with me and and the first first person that asks us a question I'm going to give one of these away. I'll give it to Matt so he can send it out. We've, we've got a bone collector 850 that will get shipped out here in the next couple of weeks. Wow. Can I ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of stuff going on in here. We got the sweepstakes going over at Realtree. If you comment where you're listening from, uh, we, we got some hats we're giving away and now optics are falling out of the sky. So that, that's awesome. So, so we got the range finder, Jared, what else is on the horizon? Yeah. Man? We've, we've got a couple of new range, uh, or excuse me, binoculars, uh, PowerView. Um, I've, I've got one here with me today. Uh, this uh, PowerView binocular, it's $109.99 that you're going to be able to get on Amazon or Walmart and, and some other places like that. Multi-coated optics, a tripod mountable, adjustable diopter, 10 by 42, really, really good lightweight um binocular 21 ounces uh this this unit is so uh really really good you know, affordable binocular and i i love the feel of it it's got some really good grips on the side so when you're wearing your gloves and it's cold outside man you're you, right you maybe can't see them here but man they're, they're going to be really good to hold on to and so then the next one is is the engage series um, this is this is the first binocular in the in our line that will have exo barrier that I was talking about on the uh, bone collector Realtree rangefinder. So fully multi coated optics, exo barrier on all the external lenses, adjustable diopter. Um, it, it's also about 28 ounces, and this is going to retail on the street for about 159. So it's really excited about the affordable optics that we've got coming out. You'll start seeing these on the shelf here in June and, and July from your most of your major retailers and, and on Amazon. So I was pretty excited the, about all the real tree bone collector optics we have. That was one of the questions for Richard asking when they're going to hit the stores. So Richard, you, you heard him right there. Um, yeah, if you guys have got any questions over any of the, the optics Jared's walking through or anything in the line or anything that Realtree's got going on, I mean, now's a, now's a great time to, to throw out a question down there in the comments. We'll do our best to, to get to them. But, you know, David, just how important are binos to the hunter? I, I think it's a very under as undervalued or underappreciated tool because we all love our rifle scopes. We, we spend yeah. a lot of time getting them dialed in and ready to go. The range finders, if you're a bow hunter, I mean, that's paramount. You want to have, you know, like arc, uh, as Jared mentioned, you know, you want to have that, that good low light performance, but binos, I mean, how often do you find yourself using binos throughout the year? Oh, I love, I love binos because it, 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 it you can see so much more. And, and I just love to look at, anything through my mind by not by nose when i'm deer hunting just you know any type of wildlife animals and then when you see a deer out there at you know two three hundred yards and you you won't know exactly what he is well i can tell you those forage but not by nose i'll tell you <laughs> we'll see exactly what he is and speaking of forage uh this is something that'll be a little interesting to get some feedback on this is the forge 10 by 42 these these aren't necessarily out yet but uh People in the comment section thought about this escape pattern because this is slick. Jared, you might not be getting these back, but these, these are nice. I don't know uh, where those went. Those were on my my <laughs> desk in my office, and now they were gone. So that's where they're at. Hey, yeah. put my put my name on that list because <laughs> that escape pattern is our brand new pattern from Realtree, and, and it is so different than anything we've ever done. And it is not what we call a stick and limbs pattern. And, and on the garment, it looks amazing. It looks phenomenal on that set of binoculars, too. It does. I'm, I'm yeah. sure that doesn't happen in, in your guys' office, David. Uh, Something doesn't uh, come in and get sat down, and then yeah. someone else walks in, and then it walks right. out with them. That's right. <laughs> That's, That's right. how you know you're in a good place is when yeah. things are a hot commodity, even among coworkers. Yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. So it's that patterns, from my understanding, David, it's more of like Western hunting. So out in, yeah. in Utah, it, it, and Colorado and such. Yes, it's a, it's a Western pattern, but 
I whitetail hunted with it some this past year, and it was incredible how it just made you disappear in a tree whitetail hunt. It, oh, it wow. was everywhere. I, I would not call it a Western pattern because it, it it's amazing. It really is. Ah, the reason I was asking is we've got a pair of 15 by 56s that we're thinking about putting in that escape pattern. And, yes. and a lot of people are using binoculars instead of spotting scopes because mm -hmm. you get the eye fatigue with binoculars like you do spotting scopes. So that was one of the questions that I wanted to ask the, the viewers if they were thinking if that escape in a 15 by 56 would be great. Yes. Yeah. I'm answer for them. We got uh Chad down here saying he loves the new real tree escape pattern. No more sticks and leaves. Loves that distortion look. So I think Chad, you got a, a lot of people are uh, are on the same same token. And uh, Richard just wants me to to auction these things off. So maybe on my personal page, I'll I'll come on a little later and we'll see if I can't <laughs> can't fund a new hunt somewhere. So uh, Matt's, Matt's right account just got larger. <laughs> Well, guys, before we let we go, both go, we have this kind of lightning round uh, prepared. It's it's very dangerous. Everybody always seems to be afraid of the the lightning round, but the the trick of it is, I'll give you a little piece of advice: is just to to answer, um, just the first thought that comes to your head. There are no wrong answers because they're your answers. So okay. we'll we'll play that in just a minute. But again, if you're just tuning in, a lot of things going on. The real tree road, real tree bushmill sweepstakes giving away some hats, throw your uh, location yeah. down there in the comments. Uh, but David, before we, we step away and do that, I mean, um, what are some things people should be on the lookout for coming from your guys' side? I mean, uh, you guys have been doing some filming, some turkey hunting. What are you uh, excited about the viewers getting a chance to watch later this year? Well, you know, it's, it seems like our content for Realtree Outdoors and Realtree Road Trips and Monster Bucks TV just gets better and better and better. It's amazing the, the content is, it gets, we are living in the golden age of deer hunting right now. It has never been better than it is right now. There's more ma management going on, more nutrition provided for these deer. And so you see them, the, the deer that people are taking across the country are, are crazy big. It's unreal. Uh, so the episodes coming up, you know, we start our brand new season on television, on Outdoor Channel and Sportsman Channel next week. Uh, all the new episodes start. So that's that's an exciting time, and we're really excited about what Real Tree Outdoors has to offer. That's great. Well, we'll we look forward to seeing that. Um, a lot of good stuff going on there. And then one last question before I do. Are you, uh, are you still riding around with Michael on the back of Harley's calling in turkeys? Is this still in the arsenal of the Real Tree? <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is so funny. <laughs> I, I saw that and had to do a double take. I was going, what is going on there? Oh my God. A good way, way to hunt, a little mobile hunting it is. Oh, that was, I, that was so much fun. Turkey hunting off a motorcycle. We had so much fun with that comedy skit. Oh my goodness. Right. <laughs> that was so fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, you mentioned this a few minutes ago, but it is a good time to be a hunter. Uh, not only all the public access and the, and the places you can go now that mm -hmm. might not have been available, but like you said, nutrition, uh, trail cameras, everything's really uh, making it uh, advantageous to get out there. So yes. if you've never if you've never hunted before, I mean, I mean, find a mentor group, find somebody, ask. Uh, there's a lot of great organizations, you know, yeah. uh, uh, here in Kansas. Uh, there's some several ones, outdoor mentors great association you can get involved in. Uh, my wife's doing a not-for-profit called Wilderness. Um, she's all taking right. a bunch of ladies out on hunts. That's been her focus. So all, right. all you got to do is hit that Google search engine, and I'm sure you can find somebody who uh, would be more than happy to take you out. I'll, I'll throw my name in that hat, too, and I'm sure you guys will as well. All right, get right. out there and get going. So, uh, <laughs> All right, so here we go, guys. We're going to get into this lightning round here. So uh, here's what it is. It's, it's 13 questions, okay? So uh, it's going to be rapid fire. David, I'll start with you. And then Jared, as soon as David answers, you go for it. And then next time around, we'll, we'll rotate. That makes sense? Got it. Okay. All right. And again, you know, don't don't overthink it. This hey, is I'm with you. Simple stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David. Uh, here we go. Number one, on your hot dog, mustard or ketchup? Mustard. Jared? Mustard. All right, Jared. Uh, Jared, this will fill in the blank for you. Uh, never find me in the deer stand without blank. Binoculars. A snack. Snack. All right. <laughs> like it. What, what's your go-to snack, David? 
I love right now. I love uh, RX bars. They, they, I love RX bars. They are so good. <laughs> Never had one. We'll have to try it. Yeah, they're great. All right. Uh, I think we're uh, back to you, David. Uh, peanut butter, crunchy or smooth? Crunchy. Smooth. Oh, mm. got a little, little decision there. All mm. right. Um, okay, Jared, this is a, a popular question um, for a lot of the, the past guests. But, uh, you know, we're all hunters. We've all been in that situation where you might have forgot your toilet paper or Mother Nature calls. So what's your, what's your best, you know, go-to solution when you're out of toilet paper in the field? Well, I'm I'm from Western Kansas, corn husks. <laughs> you and the Kiskies, I, I, that's not the way I'm going. <laughs> what about you, David? What are you, I'm what from are you Georgia, doing? and it's not poison ivy, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to go with underwear. Nice. You can, yeah. You can, uh, I'm kind of one of those guys you can always lose a stock. I can always yeah. go by without a stock. <laughs> if it gets bad enough, yeah. Sleeves have been a popular answer, yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I think we're uh, Jared. We're, we're oh no, we're on David. David, uh, you got to pick one: cake or pie? Pie, apple, mm. pie. cherry pie. All right. All right, uh, Jared, back to you. Uh, fill in the blank again. Uh, the best thing about being a hunter is just getting outdoors. Hmm, I agree with that. Being outdoors and watching God's creation. I wake up every morning. Oh yeah. All right. We're about halfway through, so you guys are doing great. All right, David, here we go. Uh, favorite wild game to eat? Wild turkey. Jared? Yeah, turkey or elk, my top two. Yeah. Okay, okay. A lot, a lot of turkey ones, All right, yeah. Um, I, I have to go – man, I, I caribou was, was fantastic. And I know, David, you shot a nice caribou, but that was a really treat for me. I wasn't expecting that. So that's probably one of my – on top of my personal lists. Um. All right, David, I think we're, we're back to you, I think, on this one. I might have got a little bit out of order, but uh, you can invite anyone into your living room right now to give a, a live musical performance. Who's coming in to, to play a little music for you on a Friday night? Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Jared, what about you, man? <sighs> Probably um, Everclear. Okay. All right. That's a good one. All right, Jared. Um, you know, everybody's been. You know, I think everybody's caught up on toilet paper now, so we're all we're all good in that regard. Thanks, Charmin, and everybody out there. But uh, when you go to put that secret stash, you know, on the roll, which way's the toilet paper going, over or under? I used to not care until I lived in the House of Women, so it's now got to go over. Exactly right. I didn't care till my wife said it's got to go over. <laughs> yeah. oh, you two you you two are off on an island on your own on that one it's yeah. the original diagram has it coming over come on guys all right uh, i think we're back to you david so what's your uh what's your go-to hunting caliber i know this can be a tough one but if you got to pick one caliber what are you doing i'm gonna go 280 yeah. 270 yeah all right all right all right jerry this is a, this is one of my fa favorite ones to ask everybody so um, I got a plane loaded up. We can go anywhere in the world, hunt anything. Obviously, it's in season. You know, we got that magical time machine. But so where are we going and what are we hunting? Kodiak Island, and we're going to shoot a big brown bear. Mm, mm. I'm headed to the Yukon to try to arrow a big, giant Yukon moose. Ooh, I, I like I like both of those answers. I will I will take you both there myself and get a tag along the way. So. All right, David, we got just two more left. So uh, uh, here's the one, uh, if, if you're the anglers out there, uh, fishing rod, you know, bait caster or spinning reel? I'm a bait caster. Okay. For sure. I'm a bait caster, but I want to learn how to fly fish and go up to one of the rivers in Montana someday. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. That's a good good place to learn for sure. Yeah. All right. We already kind of touched on this one. So this is kind of a little bit of a dud if you're just tuning in, maybe not, but Jared, uh, you know, since, since you are one of the product managers, senior product managers down there, favorite Bushnell optic. What, what's, uh, what's, what's been the favorite one? I'll change it up for you. What's been the favorite one since you've been with Bushnell um, that you've been got to work on? Nitro 1800. That that's my baby. Mm. Yep. Yep, that's a great one. David, what about you? What's been I'll your go with the prime range finder? Yeah. 
Never failed me. Ne never failed me. This wow. year. Never. Well, congratulations, guys. You made it you made it through the lightning round. That wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> yeah. Cool, guys. I got I got a I got a couple free hats for both of you. So all right. Uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you know, David, this is this has been a lot of fun. You know, everybody at Real uh, Realtree and Bushnell, it's great to combine those two teams together, and we're excited about this current year. So we we appreciate everything that you know you've helped do and, and keep the momentum going. So we're we're looking forward to it. I can't wait till fall. So we're we're stoked and ready to go. Well, thank you guys. Uh, we are so honored to be a part of the family that wouldn't be happy Bushnell Real Tree family now. And, and uh, I look forward to flying the flag this fall. Absolutely. Thank you, David, for everything you're doing so far. And it's been great to get to, get to know you and the Real Tree family. And I can't wait till our hunt this fall. It's going to be yeah. a lot. It'll be a lot of fun. I promise you. Well, uh, guys, I'm going to let you get back to your Thursday evening. I uh, appreciate both of you joining us and everybody out there who tuned in. And thanks for commenting below. Well, we got some hats. We'll be reaching out to you. Some of those early places that I, I mentioned earlier, we, we got some hats heading your way. And then uh, so we appreciate everybody watching on. Not sure if we'll be on next week uh, right there at that July 4th holiday. Might just be me in the backyard holding a couple Roman candles if anybody <laughs> thinks that sounds like a good time. So maybe, maybe we'll do that next week. All right. Yeah, then, uh, don't, forget, don't forget about the the bone collector range. I won't, I won't get forget about that one. I, I think yeah. we've already got a winner picked out on that one. Yeah. So very uh, good, <laughs> awesome. So guys, enjoy your evening. Thanks a lot. Hope to do this Thank again you. sometime and stay safe. Thank see you, you, Matt. See you, Matt. Thank you, Jared. Okay, see y'all. I enjoyed it.